Spirit. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. Amen. Glory to Christ Amen. our Lord. Amen. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water that I may not thirst nor come here to draw. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come here. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right in saying I have no husband. For you have had five husbands, and he whom now have it, him whom you now have is not your husband. This you said truly. The woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, and you say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming. When neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know. For salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For such the Father seeks to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. Ushuha la la aminai. Ushuha la shihamar. Good evening, St. George family. Good evening, Father. All right, so um, what we're reading from is John chapter 4, where Jesus meets this woman at the well. And this woman is like tripping. She's like, Jesus, how are you coming up to me right now? Um, because she's at the well at noon. She's a big sinner in the whole town. Like nobody likes her. That's why she goes to, um, to the well at noon so that she sees nobody. She has a lot of shame. She's living in shame. But Jesus comes up to her and he goes to her, hey, give me something to drink. And then the woman's like, wait, why are you talking to me? And Jesus is like, if you knew who was talking to you, you would not ask for, um, like you would say, Lord, give me living water. Water in which when you drink of me, you will never thirst. This is Jesus. So Jesus is talking to her, and he's finally explaining to her um, that when you worship God, you're going to worship him in spirit and in truth. And guys, this is what we need to kind of enter into. When we worship God, we're worshiping Him in spirit and in truth. And yet, so many of us, we worship God, and we think our worship is only physical. Like standing, sitting, kneeling, cross your hands. Like when we teach our communion kids, it's the craziest thing. It's like, put your hands together. Make sure you're kneeling perfectly. Make sure you look perfectly. And that is not... That is not the way. I mean, yeah, I always say, and, and really the truth is, say this with me. The external, the external is meant to, is meant to represent, represent the, internal. the internal. Like what we do externally is meant to represent and indicate what is happening in our hearts. So that when we kneel before Jesus, what's happening in us is an adoration, a love, a Lord my God. Like, Thomas, when he touches Jesus' side, he falls to his knees and he says, my Lord and my God. It's like this moment of adoration. So that's the physical representing the internal or the spiritual. So Jesus is talking to this woman and he's saying to her, you guys, you know, the Jews think that the only place to worship God is Jerusalem and the temple. That's where you go and that's where you meet God and God is nowhere else, only there. And Jesus is like, oh, nope, that's not the truth. We are going to worship God in spirit and in truth. Where's the Holy Spirit? Can you see the Holy Spirit? You see bisma, you see incense rising, and you think that's the Holy Spirit? No, no, no. The Holy Spirit is the love of God poured into your hearts. The Holy Spirit is you can't see, and yet God is in you. Um, a lot of people come up to me and they say, hey, who, want, who here wants to get closer to God? Any of you? Raise your hands. Do you want to get closer to God? How do you do that? You can't. There's nothing you can do to get closer to God. Why? 
because he's already inside of you. His Holy Spirit is already in you. And yet, to receive God, you need faith. Like what we heard in last Sunday's Gospel, the blind man who receives faith in Jesus, where it's not just he received physical sight, but he received spiritual sight to see the Holy Spirit living and active in our lives. That God, the Holy Spirit, and the truth starts animating our lives. Our lives change when we receive the Holy Spirit who is already in us. You receive more of the Holy Spirit, and that Holy Spirit is the true Spirit. The Holy Spirit, Jesus says, is the Spirit of truth, and the truth sets you free. Amen? Amen. All right, so this coming Sunday, I'm going to preach on this probably. St. Paul says, um, take every thought captive in obedience to Christ. So he's talking about our thinking. And so many of us are, are being destroyed and beat up by lies, by things that are not true about our identity, about the way of life, about just a lot of stuff. What we need is to live in truth. So ask yourself, what's the truth? Where is the Holy Spirit in my life? Am I living in that spirit? Amen.